On 11 November 1882, the steamer Austral was in the process of coaling in Neutral Bay in Sydney when she sunk at the buoy. Tragically, several crew members were lost as a result of the sinking. Orient Line, her owners, were shocked by the disaster. This new ship was only on its second voyage to Australia. Why did it sink? The year was 1882, and the Orient Steam Navigation Company, better known as the Orient Line, had been successfully operating between the UK and Australia since 1877. Initially using sailing ships, Orient Line was directly competing with P&O for passengers travelling to and from Australia. By this point, they had custom-built two steamships for their service, as well as purchasing a number of other ships from the PSN Co. Orient Line was also working in partnership with PSN Co. to offer additional steamship services to Australia to meet the growing demand. Austral was the second steamship purpose-built for the Orient Line, entering service in May of 1882. On 11 November 1882, the ship had made its second voyage to Australia and was in the process of recoaling in Neutral Bay in Sydney Harbour when she unexpectedly sunk at the buoy. As mentioned, tragically, several crew members were also lost in the disaster, though the majority were saved, despite the ship sinking in the early hours of the morning. Orient Line management were shocked at the news, because their new ship was so state-of-the-art and it was only on its second voyage to Australia. The big question was, how did it sink? What caused this disaster? The newspapers were filled with reports, but the overall explanation remained largely the same. Austral's sinking was a story of human error. The Austral was driven by steam engines, fed by coal-fired boilers. When coal-powered ships needed refuelling, they were taken to coaling stations, such as the Neutral Bay Buoy in Sydney Harbour, to begin the painstaking process of loading the heavy, dirty coal into the ship's coal bunkers. This meant that special coal ports were opened along the ship's side to enable workers to direct the fresh coal into the bunkers of the ship. This was painstaking and dangerous work, and required great care to ensure the ship remained trimmed given how close to the waterline these coal ports were. On this day, during the Austral's coaling process, the ship developed a list. This was put down to the coal being added to the starboard bunkers while the port side of the ship remained light due to the unloading of the ship's cargo. With the aft coaling ports having been left open while the coaling process was occurring, and portholes also being left open to ventilate the interior of the ship, the list meant that the ship quickly took on water and started to flood. The 5,589 gross registered ton ship settled in an upright position in about 40 to 50 feet, or 12 to 15 meters, of water, right there in Sydney Harbour, with masts and funnels still visible above the waterline. What a strange sight it must have been. The next thing the Orient Line wanted to know was, could the ship be saved? The answer to this question was yes, but it would mean the largest engineering feat then undertaken in the Australian colonies. Bearing in mind that this occurred before Australia even became a nation, with Federation only occurring in 1901. So salvaging the Austral took more than three months and involved building a coffer dam from wooden canvas. A coffer dam is a watertight enclosure that allows the water to be pumped out in a controlled manner. This was a remarkable feat of engineering at the time, and the ship was raised on the 1st of March 1883 at an estimated cost of around 50,000 British pounds, which roughly equates to 7.7 .7 million pounds today, or more than 14 million Australian dollars. And of course, that was just the cost of the salvage. The ship still had to be fully repaired and cleaned before it could re-enter service. Considering the repairs and the lost income from being out of service, the Austral sinking was a very costly exercise. It was widely reported in the newspapers both in Australia and across the British Empire, and was noted as being the most significant salvage operation ever undertaken in the Australian colonies. The magnitude of the work is so great, the price at stake so valuable, the danger of making a serious mistake so apparent, and the difficulties of accomplishing such an unprecedented task in a colonial seaport so numerous that those in authority resolve to hasten slowly, and while displaying all possible expedition, to make certain of every step and guard against every imaginable contingency of failure. The Sydney Morning Herald, 13th of March, 1883. Despite the disaster, the Orient Line recovered and continued to provide direct competition to P&O on the Australian route until 1918, when P&O purchased a controlling interest in the line. 
Due to Orient Line's popularity, P&O kept them as a separate entity, though from 1919 onwards, P&O and Orient Line would work in partnership with each other. The two lines officially merged in 1961, becoming P&O Orient for five years, before the Orient name was dropped and the company reverted to the name P&O. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you found this video interesting. If you'd like to see more ship history, don't forget to subscribe. A huge thank you as always to our fantastic channel members. Your support is what makes these videos possible. You can join the crew and see your name appear on future videos by following the link in the description below. For even more interesting maritime history, don't forget to check out my substack, full of exclusive maritime history articles. And until next time, I hope to see you on board.